What? I hope it works. Let me turn this down. Oh, fucking... Oh. Definitely made a connection to uh, YouTube right away. Which is Mixer weird. went live. Oh my goodness. Could it be? Could all of them connect on the first go? It's pretty amazing if it did. YouTube's working. Uh, Mixer is... Could all of them live? connect? Oh, yep, that's live. I just heard the feedback. Oh, I sound good. Um, let me see what I can do here. Shanzu says we're live on YouTube. Oh, and we're live on Twitch. Wow, it all worked. That is just incredible. What's going on, people? This is the Four Guys with Quarters podcast. This is episode number 142 for July 13th, 2017. I was thinking it was Friday the 13th the entire day, but it's sadly only Thursday. Um, so this week, not so much gaming news. We'll get into uh, what we... Figured we'll be probably an hour and 15 minute podcast because there's not really a lot of news, but we'll talk about net neutrality. We'll talk about the new Destiny 2 PlayStation 4 bundle that you guys may have seen. It's a PS4 Pro. It's the only way you can get the white one. Uh, we'll talk about some EA Access additions coming up this, uh, this summer before uh, the end of September. We should be seeing a lot more good stuff in EA Access. Talk about... Um, what else? We'll talk about weird news of the week, obviously. Some gaming addictions hardcore. And we'll talk about, you know, Prime Day, that was, and uh, how many people got in on some good gaming deals, if there were any to be had. And we'll talk about Logitech buying Astro for a measly $85 million. So before we do that, let's introduce the panel. I'm in front of 217. With me this week, we have... Making his 142nd straight appearance, ZPCI Assassin. What's going on, bud? Hola. We also have with us Taylor, a.k.a. Zebra Fries. What's going on? Hello. And last but not least, back on cam this week, we have Italian Clowns. What's up? Hey, what's going on? Jizzle says no YouTube. Uh, on my end, YouTube is working. I'm watching it, and there's people's faces. Yeah, YouTube's Moving. fine. Shansu said it was choppy for a bit, but I didn't see a choppy on my end, so maybe it was just his internet. I don't know. Anyway, it looks like it's working well, so fingers crossed, knock on wood. We're just going to keep on going. Um, anyway, all right, so before we get into the show, I want to do a couple shout-outs. Obviously, every week we like to shout-out our affiliates. Look down in our description on this video um, and shop through those links if you would. Uh, you don't have to pay any more money, but uh, it'll get us a little bit of a referral bonus that we could use and turn around to, um, you know, do some giveaways on the channel. So um, please, please go shop through those links. Don't necessarily buy what comes up when you click those. Just buy whatever. Uh, I know a lot of you did some Prime, some Prime Day shopping this past week, um, a couple days ago. So if you shopped through that link, that would have been great for us. So thank you very much, affiliates, and thank you guys for taking the time to shop through those longer uh links if you will not just going to amazon.com but having those affiliate links bookmarked or something like that um also want to shout out something we're doing tomorrow all four of us will be there for the games united against dementia charity stream it'll be a 13 hour charity stream it's going to be on our mixer channel and also on the gamers united against dementia mixer channel which is in the description below so please go there and follow them uh we're going to be streaming at 9 p.m eastern time so uh check accordingly what time that is for you but we'll be playing some rocket league if you want to hop in with us we can make that happen um i donated to the charity before uh you know this stream happened um and the goal is only like 500 pounds and it's already like 20 percent there so 500 great british pounds i think it is um so definitely uh check that out all the stuff that you need to know about that stream that's going on tomorrow is down in the description we'll be co-streaming like i said with on our mixer channel and um through theirs as well so find that below um yeah so let's just um i don't know i think i think we should start off with something kind of like you know simple something kind of straightforward Logitech guys bought Astro for eighty-five million dollars, and now that's 
Oh, go ahead. I, yeah, go ahead. I, sorry to cut you off, but that no, sounds please. really kind of cheap. Uh, it, ma- it makes me kind of wonder, like, does Astra have problems with their bottom line? Were they trying to overhype their products, over-advertise, sell it for too much of a price point, and then not get enough buyers? And what about all their sponsors? What's going to happen now? you think Logitech's going to keep sponsoring all those people? Well, um, that's the thing. I think maybe this is a play to get more into the gaming and e-league space. I don't know. Logitech has had notoriously uh, some people in the community and through DMs and stuff. Uh, Jamie Moran in particular has been to- telling me that Logitech headphones are not really that great. Now, I haven't no. played with Logitech gaming headphones in a while. Clowns, you say oh. you have experience? Yeah, the last time I used it was when uh, Grand Theft Auto 1 came out and they were trash. So you think Logitech, you know, they have the keyboard space, like they have that down pretty well. Um, they have the, they certainly have the mouse space. <coughs> Logitech mice are amazing. Not not only gaming mice, but also, you know, just regular mice. I'm using uh, Logitech keyboard and mouse right now, actually. I've been using one for like past three and a half years, so... Um, and now, uh, you know, why not round out their gaming portfolio, if you will, with arguably the best gaming headset maker on planet Earth and Astro. I mean, Taylor, you have Astros and you swear by them, right? Yeah, absolutely. So kiss that goodbye. I'm not trying to be negative. <laughs> but expect Logitech speakers and the next set of Astros coming out, maybe even on the uh, what do you call it? The mic as well, maybe a Logitech mic instead of an Astro mic. I mean, expect the quality to go downhill and the price to go up. Well, I know if if there is a knock against against Astros, uh, you know, the sound quality is amazing, comfort's amazing, customizability has been top notch. Um, if there is a knock against against Astros, it is the microphone. So maybe Logitech can help them in that space, and they can you know use their assets, use what's established by Astro, and kind of collaborate and make the perfect gaming headset. Now and maybe. Who knows? You know, clowns. I know you're a little pessimistic about it, but maybe you can be optimistic and think that they they make just the best gaming headset no. now, and that the mic just it's, no, it's not gonna happen. Oh man, it's killing me. It's not gonna happen because they're not gonna want to produce that high of a quality of a headphone. They're gonna want to knock down the speakers to their crappy ones, their mic to their crappy ones. They might even knock down the design a little bit to be less comfortable, and it might feel like a Logitech headset. Um, at the price of an Astro. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Interesting. I mean, they already ha- they already have their agreements with their vendors. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Taylor, you have Astros. I don't know if you're using them right now, but like you said, you you swear by them. What do you think of this move? You think it was a good move for Logitech? What do you What are your thoughts on it? On Logitech's part, it's a smart move. On Astros, not so much. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Eighty-five million dollars, though. I, I feel like I feel like Astro kind of devalued themselves a little, unless we're just like confused or just ignorant on how much these companies are really worth. Like Astro really only makes, as far as I know, gaming headsets. So is that really worth more than eighty-five million? But on the other hand, you know, if you ask ten, you know, ten people what their favorite gaming headset is, if they were given all of them, I'm sure, you know, the majority. Maybe like even more than five out of ten would say that Astro is the best. And I've used A50s and Taylor, you have A40s, right? Right. And like they're just so comfortable and so great. Like I, I don't know how they couldn't leverage this into more than eighty-five million. You think of eighty-five million, you see other companies being sold for like billions of dollars that you think are are huge, but maybe Astro just isn't that big. I don't know. I don't know. Jizzle says $85 million is nothing. He says that in the YouTube chat. Hey, you know, if... It isn't. He's 100% right. People are also saying in the YouTube chat they think Astros are going to get a price cut. I saw somebody say that earlier. i got to scroll up and see. But Chicken Spaghetti said it most recently. Thinks Astros going to get a price cut. So I know Astros are, are fairly expensive, but they do have, you know, overall the best features, um, you know, that mic may not be the greatest, but it's it's definitely serviceable. So, um, you guys think they're going to drop the price on this now? You think Logitech will have the goods? No? No. Logitech needs the profit. They need the money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sassy, you've been quiet on this, bud. What do you, what do you think about this acquisition? 
Well, I feel like $85 million is a good amount for someone that just makes mm. headphones. I mean, they're not like Twitch, you know, or other businesses that make, you know, billions of dollars when, you know, they sell. Um, as for the price cuts, I think they could try to compete with Turtle Beach and make some cheap, but good quality. I'm like Turtle Beach. I'm like Turtle Beach, yeah. Turtle Beach headphones <laughs> usually break pretty quickly. I mean, I, let me see. In the YouTube chat, Enrique, our buddy at Basement Radio Arcade Podcast, he says he uses Turtle Beach. Now, I used to use Turtle Beach, too. And then, uh, you know, six months, seven months goes by, and, and those Turtle Beaches That's become uh, Turtle shit, if you know That's what I mean. Um, so, yep. Who is that? Is that Reezy or is that Taylor? Yeah, it's Reezy go away. No, it's Cameron. He's trying yeah. to tell me something. Oh, has he got a thought on this? Let him speak. No, he thought we were talking about the new Astro headsets that came out. Yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll talk about that. So Astro released A10s, right? Those are wicked cheap. They're like 60 bucks or something. So that's yep. already like dropping the price for a premium product, you'd think. Maybe, I don't know, maybe that was the play for Logitech? I don't know. Has Reezy used those? Has Does he have experience with that? or? Not the A10s yet, no. Oh, uh, okay. I, I'm sure he'll buy them soon. Mm-hmm. I mean, 60 bucks for a pair of Astros, that's really cheap. Yeah. Um, Mine were 150. Yeah, 840 is, I think, is like a nice sweet spot with, you know, price, features, and, and sound quality. I think, you know, 840s and 850s are, like, similarly comfortable, I would say. Um, it's just 850s has a little bit more, a better, you know, surround sound profile, obviously. Uh, you know, wireless on, on some of the 850 models, that kind of thing. But... Um, you know, this may be a little bit interesting in this topic, and only a couple, only I saw a couple websites in my Google search on this. But according to what I found on the internet, Skull Candy bought Astro Gaming for ten point eight million, uh, May six two thousand, uh, around May six two thousand eleven. Wait, Skull Candy bought who? Astro Gaming for ten point eight million back in two thousand eleven. Wow. So, if so you, I mean, if you look at it like so that, if, eight times the value. Yeah, if that's factual, there. I mean, Skull Candy is making a profit on this. Yeah, big time, big time. If I was Skull Candy, I'd sell it off too. Skull Candy is like, that's perfect. A Skull Candy. When I think of Skull Candy, I'm like, oh, that's so 2011. You know, you think, yeah, I haven't heard anything about Skull Candy in so long. You don't no. see them at the gaming conventions or anything. So I think it's a smart move for them if they really paid like ten million and they're gonna sell it for eighty five. That would be that'd be nuts. That'd be crazy. Um. All right. Anything else to say about this? I mean, I I think the kind of point that I wanted to get going on this for the podcast was: is this a bargain or is this not a bargain? Do you think this is gonna make stop making money for Logitech or do you think they're kind of wasting their money on this? We'll make money. I mean, the Astro brand name is, is good, so as long as they keep the Astro name, it'll, it'll bring them money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think so. I think, um, you know, I, I, I would hope that Logitech doesn't rebrand it. Like, if they're going to rebrand it, I would like them to be like Astro by Logitech. I don't want them to get rid of that because Astro is, is such a well-known commodity. Maybe not like, you know, in other sectors, maybe not just out of gaming, but I mean... I don't know. Something tells me that Logitech wants to expand this past gaming too. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but um, people in the YouTube chat are talking about other brands. They're saying Vmoda destroys Astros. Um, Chicken Spaghetti said earlier in the chat about um, Lucid Sounds, and I've used Lucid Sounds headphones before. At uh, this ma- most recent packs, actually, I used some lucid sounds headphones uh they're actually really really good build, qual- build quality is good so competition's there so maybe logitech is buying them is going to work on you know dropping the price and getting it a lot more affordable because i know the a50s people always think of that as um you know super high end because of the price but um wow v moda holy crap merc wasn't kidding like these things are designer class they got a, a force uh uh, <laughs> branded uh, Metallo wireless uh, headphones. Really? Yeah, hmm. I mean, I don't know if it has to do with the 
the racing, but it says Forza. Hmm. I never even th- I never even thought of Vmoda as like a gaming headphones producer. Like I've always I've used Vmoda buds before. I know the Jizzle um, in whatever chat he's in. He was in Beam, but now he's in YouTube. I think uh, can can attest to Vmoda being good for good for the price. Um. But yeah, Vmoda gaming headphones. Everybody's getting into the gaming headphone scene. It seems even like the big boys. You know, I'm surprised Bose isn't in it. Even companies like uh, Sennheiser, like, you know, the big guys are getting in. So this could be a power play for Logitech. Grab the one of the most well-known ones, probably the one that's known for the best quality and and, uh, and dominate that scene. That, that would be, uh, that'd be a huge play. Or maybe they could just turn around and sell it to Turtle Beach. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean, they could. Think about it. If, if they came into Turtle Beach and said, hey, we'll sell you this for... 95 million. I mean, Turtle Beach picks it up. Now they own their their best competitor. Yeah, yeah. True. Very true. All right, any more to say about this, lady and gentlemen? Or? Nope. Wow, oh, okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, let us know if, you, if you're still interested in Astro, even though Logitech bought them up because... Um, I've seen some people on YouTube, I mean on Twitter rather, saying that now they're no longer interested in Astro because they don't like Logitech or whatever. So, um. Amen. Smart people. <laughs> nice. All right. Next topic. Really quick hitter again. Another one like that one. Uh, the limited edition Destiny 2 Glacier White PS4 Pro has been announced. Um, it's the only way you can get a white PS4 Pro. And if you recall, they did this with the PS4 uh, Vanilla at this point. I can't even say with the regular PS4. PS4 Vanilla, they did it with uh, the original Destiny. They had a bundle for a white one. Um, and that was well sought after. This one is uh, coming out on the 6th of September. It will be $450. It's a one terabyte PS4 Pro. It comes with the game and the expansion pass. So you're essentially getting like more than half off the game at if you look at uh you know average retail value uh ps4 pro is like 400 bucks the game with the expansion pass is 90 ish right assassin yeah so you're getting more than half or you're getting just under half rather off of the game with the expansion pass so um what do you guys think of this it's kind of a power play that you don't see xbox you saw xbox do this with the 1s with battlefield one but you don't see it too much with uh, you know, third-party consoles, they don't partner up with, uh, you know, these third-party companies and, and make big splashes with them. Um, so what do you guys think of this, this, uh, this news? I think the white PS4 is ugly. Um, maybe that's just me, but I, yeah, I think it's extremely ugly. I thought the vanilla version of it when it was white looked ugly. Um, I don't know, there's just something about the PS4 that when it's white, it just doesn't look good. People in the chat agree with you, bud. Supersonic Station says, ugliest console ever. I don't know if I'd go that far, but I mean, I like white electronics, so I could be biased. Uh, Basement Radio Arcade Podcast Enrique says, the last custom Destiny PS4 for the Taken King looked much better. Now, I don't remember the Taken King one. It had, like, some gold or something. Not, like, actual gold, but, like, the colored gold. And and it, it looked better, but it wasn't, like, whoa, I need to buy this now, like, the Battlefront one that they had with the sticker. Right. Like the Batman one. That was the best one. That was like a time. <laughs> Batman, Uncharted, Battlefront. Those were like day one buys. See, but don't you find that a little bit of a problem with Xbox's approach? Like, don't you think people want to buy the system with the with the game, get a little bit of a cut, and have a custom console? You think that's kind of overblown? You know, really, I, I think they should do a lot more of them. I mean... A lot of people, like, I mean, look at Xbox uh, Addict, whatever. He likes to buy all those things, you know, those custom consoles. I mean, what's stopping PlayStation trying to collect them if they brought more out? Yeah, I mean, even Nintendo, like, like, Xbox has done that a good amount with their own properties. You know, they did it with Minecraft, did it with Gears, they did it with Sunset Overdrive. Um, Help me, I can't think of another one they did it with. I feel like they did it with something. Oh, Halo Master Chief Collection. They've done it with games before, but only like really only their own properties. Like Battlefield One was 
was a special case. And I feel like yeah. PlayStation has it on lock with the third parties. They did it with Call of Duty Black Ops 3. They did it with the last, uh, the last night, wow, Arkham Knight, like you said. They did it with Destiny 1. Um, so they're, they're really getting those third-party connections and getting the third-party games that people want for discounts. Uh, I feel like that's a bigger deal almost. I feel like that's, that's a huge deal. Also forgetting when uh, Xbox had the Call of Duty rights, they added Infinite Warfare console. Infinite Warfare? Or not Infinite, Advanced Warfare. Fuck. They did? I don't remember that. Yeah, one terabyte. Yep. Really? Was it actually special edition or was it just like the console yeah. with the game? Really? Yeah, no, I missed was, that one. I'm going to have to look that it up. It was like right yeah. If I find it, I'll, I'll post the link. Um, Taylor or, or, uh, clowns on this? Um, I'm looking at the picture that you have on the podcast. And it, it looks very simple and plain. <laughs> I just, I don't see this one as being really a custom console. I mean, maybe I'm missing something and there's something like on the side or by the HDMI. I don't know, but to me, it just looks like a plain white PS4 pro console. Yeah, I, th- I think the I think the argument of why it's custom is the fact that it's the only way you can get a white PS4 Pro. You know what I mean? There's no other way. Even with the PS4 vanilla, I'm pretty sure the only way you can get a white one at that time. Or, you know, the only reason it was special is because it was white. Well, see, what's going to happen, though? Like, let's say that you go out and buy this Destiny 2 special PS4 Pro limited edition console, right? And then... You go to trade it later at GameStop, they're probably going to give you the same price as a PS4 Pro 1 terabyte hard drive. They're not going to be like, oh, this was a special edition. Here's the extra money for this Destiny. They'll be like, no, I don't see Destiny on this. Here's your $3. Go home, kid. Right, right. No, you're right. I mean, the value is in the collecting scene, not necessarily on you know the GameStop, Best Buy, Amazon resale scene. You're right. I mean, I've never done that because I know if you trade into Best Buy or Amazon, there is like an option to select them. Uh, when you're doing the trade-in process, and I've never checked if there are different values, but you know what? Like, I know Xbox four four eight, big fan of the show, um, and we're a big fan of him. Great guy. Uh, he bought a PS4 vanilla. I believe he has a white one that he bought from from uh, from GameStop. I would love to ask him if he paid more for that because it was white. Yeah. Or if he didn't. Um, but he Check bought a well, he bought a used one, so. Well, like you just mentioned, like the aftermarket scene with collectors and stuff, right? So even if a collector was selling this to another collector, how do you not know that it's the original? Because somebody could get a a broken PS4 Pro, pop the case off it, put it on like a crappy PS4 Pro 500, you know, gigabyte hard drive. Like, oh, here's this Destiny bundle. I'm going to sell it on uh, Craigslist or Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, mean, you're not going to be able to tell the difference again. And you're like, oh, crap. What did I buy? Yeah, you gotta be gotta be real careful. You gotta check those labels and shit. But I mean, by that time, it's usually too late if you buy them on eBay or something like that. Um, Middle aged gamer says it comes with a hundred dollar game. So I'm I'm taking. He didn't say anything other than that, but I'm taking that that means that um, it's obviously a good deal. Uh, and I and I think we all agree it's a good deal. Um, and is it a hundred dollar version or is it a ninety dollar version? I think it's the hundred dollar version. It is the hundred dollar version, okay. Gotcha. So it's got the game, it's got the expansion pass, it's got that limited edition sword and all that silly shit. Um So the system's only three fifty. Yeah, I mean it's un- it's can't argue it's a great deal. Like it is a good deal. Um and and Sony's playing it well. Sony's playing it off well, they're advertising it well. Um you know, they're advertising it as if you buy the system, you get the three-day early access to the game, which isn't exactly true, right? Because PlayStation 4 people get it early anyway, right? Isn't that true? The entire game or just the beta? No, the entire game. You buy no, this. They don't, they don't, no one gets the game early, I believe. Oh, is this just... Oh, you just get the disc or the code early? You can't play it? You just get it? Yeah. Got it. Unless right? they're doing some stupid thing that I didn't hear about, but that just doesn't seem... Right, After, you know, they get access to the full game a few days early. Right, you know, that you're right. That wouldn't make any sense. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> that wouldn't make any sense at all, especially in a game like this. Like if it's, you yeah. know, different games, yeah, but not like this. Um, Taylor, are you gonna shell out those big dollars you're making now with uh, for a PS4 Pro White Destiny Edition? No. 
<laughs> I really don't care about Destiny whatsoever. What? A lot of people Mm-mm. don't. A lot of people don't. I see. I'm the exact opposite. I'm. I already pre-ordered Destiny, and I hated Destiny One, and I'm gonna get back into it maybe. But, um, no, I, I'm hearing a lot of people like Taylor that just don't give a shit about Destiny anymore. I maybe because they're pissed they can't transfer their characters no, over. No, yeah, yeah. I know you're right. There's a lot of people on that train. A lot of people that are sticking to their guns. They can't transfer the stuff they put like seven, you know, seven thousand hours into or whatever it is. Um, so I don't know. Jizzle says he might be on the Destiny bandwagon. He needs to check it out. Well, Jizzle, we have uh, you know <laughs> we have vanilla Destiny, so you can check out that. Um, but we don't have any Chicken's, expansions. So Chicken Spaghetti just cracked me up in the chat. Yeah, he says Destiny can R.I.P. and then he says rest in shit, which doesn't match <laughs> R.I.P. So uh, I don't really I don't really understand where you're going with that. Maybe you can elaborate, but. Um. <laughs> He tried. It was good, yeah. I liked it. Well, it got us to read it, right? Yeah. Um, so, Taylor, what do you think, though, about you know what we've been talking about with PlayStation going after the third-party special edition consoles and, you know, like kind of what uh, Middle Age Gamer uh, said that, you know, essentially the console is only 350 and you get a special edition. What, what do you think? I mean, it's really smart for them to go after third-party stuff especially since Microsoft doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. So it locks down that area for them. But, I mean, to come out with just a plain white console and claim that it's a custom one and all this stuff, it's just kind of boring that you come up with a plain white console for a third-party game. Yeah, kind of lame. Kind of lame. People eat this shit up, though. Like, the white, the original white know. PlayStation, they just eat that shit up. And, and remember when the when the 1S was announced and it was white and people were just eating that shit? Like, me included. I'm guilty. Guilty as charged right here. But I'm on record. I mean, we talked about the Minecraft one and how they could have... I remember on the podcast we talked about this and how they could have done something like, you know, made it look like a, a creeper or something like that. Like, customized it really, really well for Minecraft. I mean, it... The opportunities are literally endless to customize it for Minecraft, um, and they didn't do that. And so, you're you're absolutely right, Taylor. I think I think this is a little bit of a missed opportunity. But at the same time, I think maybe white co- a white console would would appeal more to more people than maybe maybe something with. I mean, what would Destiny Two have it on at Assassin? Like the Destiny logo. I mean, it could have the logo. It could you know have. The Guardians on there, you know, I could. And there's different variations that they could have done. Yeah. But yeah, you guys are right. I mean, it's kind of lazy. It is. Um, and it's easy for them to do. It's not even, you know. Yeah. It, it, you know, throw white out there, bam. Like, they did the white thing before it was successful, so they're like, oh, that was successful. Don't, you know, if anything broke, don't fix it. Bam, here's another white console. And uh, you know I'm gonna have to see in person. I thought the I thought the vanilla PlayStation Four and white was was sexy as fuck. I'm not gonna lie, um, but I you know this one I'm not sure it's gonna be as sexy. You know the triple layer is not gonna be as sexy as the double layer in white. I don't think. I don't. But um, J Street says he needs a silver console. This is coming. They make one. Did did Sony make one? Was it actually yeah for the twentieth anniversary or whatever? Oh uh, yeah, that that gray that gray one. Yeah, they did make a yeah. gray one. Yeah, that one was sexy. Um, Keith Trailer says and he wants a dishonor <laughs> to oh, console. Yes. Burn that. Burn that. No. Yes. Drop that. A new that Garnet. could rest. You know what? R.I.P. Rest in shit on that one. <laughs> R.I.P. Rest in shit. Dishonored. No. Give me the Dishonored console. You know what? Xbox has marketing rights for Assassin's Creed. Get me a fucking Assassin's Creed console. All right? Get me an Assassin's Creed console. Who knows? We might see one. I, mean, Assassin's, I don't know. Assassin's Creed Xbox One X. I'll buy it. Right. And Taylor's on board with that. <laughs> I'm down. There you go. Assassin's Creed Xbox One X. 550 bucks, And it comes with... Well, I don't. The DLC is probably going to be free, but okay. So maybe it's like five hundred bucks, and it comes with Assassin's Creed for a limited time only. Maybe like ten thousand only made, or like twenty thousand. Something like Xbox is going to go some sort of route to get these third-party games back into the con- the custom console thing. And, and I, I don't. 
I don't think, you know, I'm going to be honest, I don't think Xbox is going to go into custom consoles as much. I think they, you know, they slowly want to move away from so much hardware and go more service-based. I really do think that's where Xbox is headed. Why did they make so many custom consoles last year? They had the blue, green, gears. Yeah, but how did that do for them? You it know, didn't I, do I'm, well. I'm not sure it's it about, did well. It's about the profit. If it's making a profit, they'll keep doing it. If it's not profiting, they're not going to do it as much. I, I mean, do. we'll still see some custom consoles, but I don't think it's going to be like the days of the 360. I think that's long gone. And just like in like Nintendo too. Nintendo, right? They've done custom 3DSs for days and those did, you know, fairly well for them, but recently you haven't seen so much of that. And now like with the Switch, they've had opportunities to do a custom, you know, Breath of the Wild one, they had a cu- opportunity to do a custom Splatoon one, they had the opportunity to do, you know, a custom Super Mario Odyssey one in the future, and we've heard nothing about that. So why, you know? Why can Sony get away with and Sony, I mean, if you can get away with it, do it. I mean, I'm not knocking it for that, but why can Sony get away with a white console with no custom? And if Nintendo would have put out a Splatoon one with like splashes of paint all over it, it probably wouldn't do too well. If it came, even if it came with the game, you know, it's it's very, it's weird. It's like double standard. I think it's just the sales where they got the sales right now. Like when it was flipped, right? When Microsoft and 360 Days had so much out there. So many customers buying 360s. I mean, they were selling those custom consoles. But did you really see a lot of PS3 custom consoles back then? No. No, you didn't. You didn't. So I think it's just where the market's at for the company at the time. Yeah. Like, I think if, you know, for example, I think if Nintendo did, like, a Nicktoons or a Splat console with Nickelodeon Slime, like, designed on it with some type of Nicktoons game, I think it would do phenomenally well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, definitely, definitely driven by the market, and I, that was something I hadn't even thought of with the PlayStation Three. But it's one hundred percent correct. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see what this, how this Destiny thing does. But I have a sneaking suspicion that it's going to do extremely well. Um, but yeah, that's the news on uh, on the PS4 Pro. That's going to be the only way you can get the white Pro. So. Uh, you're planning on getting Destiny and you haven't upgraded to a Pro, you don't have a PlayStation 4, and you want to get it on a PlayStation, I mean, you might want to consider doing that. You know, maybe you can resell it. Who knows? Um, all right. Let's get into kind of like the meat and potatoes of this episode, the thing that I think is the most controversial uh, at this time. Net neutrality. And this is something that I don't think many people really know what it really is. I think a lot of people kind of just think, okay, well, uh, you know, my ISP is going to block certain things that they don't want in their network. Um, or if they think, you know, say for instance, and this has been done in the past, like Comcast or Xfinity or whatever you want to call them, has throttled like BitTorrent transfers, no matter what it was, whether well, it was legal or not. Okay, not, not only that, um, you know, back before net neutrality first passed, right, with Tom Wheeler, when the Obama administration was putting a lot of pressure on him to pass it, because initially he didn't want to pass it either. Um, Before then, though, Comcast, like in the Philadelphia region and certain markets of Philadelphia, and I worked for Comcast for like four months, and then I decided to leave because I just didn't like the way they operated on throttling, Mm -hmm. uh, because I worked worked in the tech division, like inside the system software. But um, they were going to go ahead and plan on charging gamers like anybody who uses high bandwidth downloads, DLC downloads, they were going to charge them extra per month just for that stuff. So if net neutrality goes away now, right, all the ISPs are open and they'll be like, okay, well, you know, if you're a gamer and you're going to play on Xbox or PlayStation, we're going to charge you extra per month for that service with that high-speed bandwidth, or we could just throw you 11 kilobytes per second because we don't really care, you know, because we want your money and that's all that you're good for. And then on top of that, they could charge Microsoft, they could charge Sony, or any other uh, Steam, uh, Blizzard. You know, they could charge them extra for fast lane access too mm-hmm. on their services. It's just, I mean, it's sh- shit. Mm-hmm. Really, what it is. I hate to say the word, but it is that. Net neutrality needs to still exist, and all this changing can just R.I.P. Right? Rest in shit. <laughs> nope. Rest yeah. in shit. Sure. Um, but yeah, Klons just described it perfectly. Like, um, you know, if net neutrality goes away, 
And, and people may say, okay, well, this Battle for the Net thing, this was Wednesday, this was yesterday. It was battleforthenet.com slash July 12th. You can go in there, you can send, it brought up a form, you send a, a letter to the FCC saying, you know, you don't approve of this. And, and, and you know, respectfully, I would hope, uh, tell them that, you know, net neutrality is bad. Or uh, getting rid of net neutrality is bad, rather. Um, and Clowns described it perfectly. If net neutrality goes away, um, like... You're gonna, you're probably gonna be selecting special packages with your ISP to game, like all you gamers out there that are probably listening to this podcast. You're all gamers. Uh, that's the reason you listen. You're gonna be, you're probably gonna be paying an extra fee, like clowns just said that they were kind of scheming back in the day, uh, you know, to to get online gaming because that uses a lot of bandwidth. Like online gaming uses a lot of throughput, not not necessarily, you know, uh, while you're gaming a lot of data you know it's not a lot of um you know it's not like you're getting like terabytes upon terabytes every time you play a match of like call of duty but you know the throughput the constant throughput is is damaging or or dangerous for these companies to allow them to maintain like advertised speeds in certain regions and stuff like that it's you know there's only a big enough tunnel and if you're if these gamers are using the tunnel they have to uh you know get more money for that for that vet that precious space. That's kind of like the theory on why to get rid of net neutrality. So, um, yeah. And to give you guys another good recent example is that, um, spectrum, AKA time Warner in New York state, the state of New York was throttling gamers. Like they wouldn't realize it at the time, but they'd go to log on to like blizzard services and all of a sudden get disconnected in the middle of stuff or have a hard time downloading stuff. So the New York state attorney general looked into it, asked for speed test proof, and that was enough proof for them to go ahead and sue Spectrum for failing to abide by net neutrality. Mm -hmm. Basically, the New York State Attorney General said, hey, you violated net neutrality. You took away people's rights because they're paying you for this service that you advertise. And then you're going to turn around and throttle them. No, we're going to sue you. And it was like over $100 million and they had to pay a, a class action. It was huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the and the cable companies are are now you know flipping the script because everyone is you know headhunting for Comcast, Verizon, Spectrum. Uh, you know there there are AT and T even. There are a few companies that were you know wanting to not have such strict rules that were enforced with net neutrality, and now people are headhunting them, and they're like, no, 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 we we, we don't want to get rid. We don't want to get rid of net neutrality. We just want there to be some less strict rules that we can enforce you know it's a free internet it's just we want to we want to enforce just a few rules here and, and that's just their way to get around them you know getting hate but it's still the same thing so and you know another thing on top of it too is that people don't look at this but the economic side of it for the average citizen right so at most people go online these days to apply for services, whether it be for social programs, whether it be for schools, for their kids, college applications. Um, so imagine, you know, your ISP throttling your applications for any of those services or telling you, sorry, that that particular website's not in the package that you purchased. So you're going to have to do that by paper mail mm -hmm. or go in person. States away sometimes for this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You won't even be able to access your, you know, your senator or congressman via the internet. You're gonna have to do the old way, like fax and phone. Mm -hmm. So this this is like a huge deal because it, it's gonna affect everything down to job applications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Like people don't realize how big of a, a big of a thing this is. Like there's a reason that there was a day to protest it, like internet wide. And the reason is it's not just for gamers. Like clowns is kind of alluding to it's. It's for everything. Like, everything can be affected. And somebody in the YouTube chat, Keith Triller, says, lives in the middle of Kansas. No can you know, you have broadband, no data cap or slowdown. Would you be affected? I mean, technically, everyone would be affected. It's just yep. a degree of, of how you're affected. I mean, your ISP could potentially, you know, make whatever rules they want and be like, oh, you're watching too much YouTube. Like, yeah, we're going to we're going to take away your HD and throw you down to SD definition temporarily, right. you know, for the next six months because we feel like it. Um, I mean, there's just so much to this that everybody should really look into. Um, and you know what Keith is saying, you know, can he get capped or can he get slowed down? Yeah. I mean, they could do it. Also, another thing too, is a lot of those small towns or rural towns that use municipality ISPs, which are backbone, like say like Google or like Microsoft somehow. Right. Well, without net neutrality, uh, Comcast and Time Warner could come in and 
force those ISPs at discounts for those rural towns out and say, no, sorry, you're getting no broadband here because we have an agreement with this municipality. And without net neutrality, you have no right to get that discount ISP back mm -hmm. in your town. And, you know, to take it a step further, you put the you could put the small town ISPs out of business because Comcast could make an exclusive deal with Netflix and be like, oh, you know, Comcast has the best Netflix. And then the other guys won't be able to compete because, you know, net neutrality wouldn't be there to make sure it was equal. And Comcast would or or whoever, you know, Verizon Fios, you know, Google Fiber, whoever would have these these deals with companies that. A lot of people get internet for like, you know, the user base on Netflix is just growing, growing, growing. A lot of people use internet specifically for Netflix or YouTube. If you get side deals with those, you're, you know, henceforth putting smaller guys out of business because like they can't compete if they have Netflix at 240p and Comcast has it at fucking 4k. Like this, you know what I mean? So it's, yep. just, it's bad. It's bad. And, and they wouldn't have to lease their lines out to the smaller guys, too. Like, in some areas, if Spectrum or Time Warner or Comcast is the only line in that area, sometimes they have to lease, like, a sub-network based under different rules and net neutrality and state regulations. But without that, the ISPs, like Comcast, can tell the small guy, no, we're not going to lease it to you at an affordable price. You want our line, you, we could charge you up to, like, $3 million a month, which would intentionally put them out of business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely. Clowns, are, I mean, uh, Assassin and Taylor, I feel like we've been spouting off all this goody good. I want to get you guys feeling on this, so what do you guys think, either one of you? I really hate when net neutrality comes back up, just because it's an argument between people forever for something that is, it's basically taking away freedom of speech, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. And number one in the Constitution is freedom of speech. And freedom of press. And people always try and stifle it. Oh, the popo's going by, I think. Um, no, uh, to that point, because that's a great point. I'm really glad you brought that up because I totally would not have thought about that. But to that point, I've seen people on, on Twitter and, and YouTube being like, oh, we got to, or, you know, on, on the net commenting on some, some articles, specifically on Ars Technica. They did an article recently that was very, very good that I would advise people to go read about this whole thing. Um, the, there are people being like, oh, what is this? The Declaration of Independence? Like, you can't rely on such old laws. Like, this is the new world. I'm like, are you serious? I, just because of laws, why don't we just get rid of all the laws from like pre-1900 then? Because mm -hmm. they're all not good because they're old. What is this, food? We're going to throw away in the mm -hmm. trash? Expired? Like, come on. Nope. Well, you know, um, sorry to cut you off this house. I just wanted to reiterate on Teller's point real quick is that courts have already debated Teller's point. Like, is it free speech or is it not free speech? And because the Internet as of right now is not a constitutional right or a civil right, it doesn't count as free speech um, in a court of law. Mm -hmm. No, I, sad but true. Sad but true. I thought there was a ruling back in 2014 saying that net, uh, enacting net neutrality or discontinuing it, whatever. Um, was against the Constitution because um, it allowed people free speech. Initially, Tom Wheeler was against it, but he didn't oppose it when the Obama administration backed in. So it was never officially challenged back then. Hmm. Interesting. See, I, I thought... I saw something about something in 2014 with a court case about it. No, net neutrality was enforced in 2014 um, by court cases. So like when ISPs try to throttle on stuff, it was enforced back then because the law was on the books. But Ajit Pai and the current FCC and Repo Republicans at the FCC, they want to take it away. Mm. If they take it away, there's no law to enforce it anymore mm. because that neutrality was the law. Right. Right. See, I thought, I, I kind of thought what Taylor was thinking, like I, you know, back then I had heard a lot of buzz around, you know, taking away or enforcing rules against net neutrality would take away freedom of speech. I, I remember hearing that very, very distinctly. I just don't know how far mm. it went beyond that, you know? Yeah, that was just the administration's argument back then, as, you know, Obama was basically telling these mm. corporate firms, you know, we're not going to go ahead and take away people's rights for free speech on the Internet. That was just his argument, but it was never officially uh, gone beyond that. It just became a law because Tom Wheeler pushed it. Gotcha. 
Well, you know what? Fuck that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, a lot of other countries are kind of deeming internet to be uh, a right. You know, I. I I think the U.S. should kind of take that. I, I can't believe the U.S. is behind other companies in that. It's, it's amazing to hear from, like, some of my friends that are in the U.K. when I met up with them at E3, and they're like, oh, you know, it's, it's weird not to have, like, a b- below. It's weird to have below 100 down internet in the U.K. or something like that. And I'm just like, how are we behind these companies? Or these countries, rather. Like, not to say the U.S. is the best, but, I mean, the U.S. has such technological advances how can they not get, you know, the average internet speed in the country or get internet to like, you know, whatever qualifies it to be a right, you know what I mean? 90%, 99%, whatever the number has to be. How can you not get that reach? You know, it's, it's crazy to me. It's crazy. You know, uh, assassin, I didn't mean to cut you off before, but what were you going to say? Cause I know you mentioned some great stuff in party chat when we talked about it. I'm just saying this is total bullshit if they have to make us pay for you know to game i mean some people are not going to pay for that and like someone put in the chat all the games are going to end up being friday the 13th no one's going to make multiplayer games digital sales are going to be gone because no one's going to be especially on the xbox one x no one's going to download 100 gigabytes of you know stuff when it takes like 200 kilobytes I mean, I already have the problem with Spectrum when I pay for fifty. Mm-hmm. It's it's total ass. I mean, um, and then you're gonna see an uprise in single player games, and then GameStop's gonna fucking love it because they can't oh, you know yeah. lose sales because there's no digital games anymore. Oh yeah, dude. If if multiplayer if multiplayer gaming took a huge hit because of something like net neutrality, the gaming industry would be, for lack of a better word, fucked. All right, yep. would be fucked because everything's because things are moving to games as a service. Things are moving to free to play. Things are moving to massively multiplayer online. Things are moving to an online era. You know, argue what you will about you know the PlayStation Four franchises. Yeah, those are great single player games. Um, but I mean, look at the way in the, like everything's going. Games are just becoming multiplayer these days, and to to do yep. something that would hamper that, like by. by you know, like you're, what you're saying, Assassin, is right. If net neutrality is gone, then you're potentially damaging, crippling a uh, multi-billion dollar industry that is just growing. Yeah. Like, what about E-League and stuff like that? Like, that's even though that's like local, uh, you know, local area network, that's, those are land games. Those aren't, you know, online necessarily, quote unquote. Um, like, people aren't going to be as interested because they can't play those games. You're not going to... You know what I mean? You're not going to necessarily... People watch Rainbow Six Siege matches because... Not not only because they're interested in the professionals playing, but they're interested because they play the game. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, but yeah, Keith Trillis says, Xbox Game Pass, PS Now would be over. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be over because, like Assassin said... Add the nineteen dollar ninety nine cents a month gaming package where you get your ports open for for PlayStation Network and uh, Xbox well, Live. Well, nineteen ninety nine is generous because Comcast, when they wanted to do it before net neutrality, is between eighty to one hundred and twenty per month. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine like you're already paying like eighty ninety bucks a month for internet just for the internet. Like, don't even think about each you know cable whatever. And then yet you, you have to top it off with double or more of that price. Um, you know, you're at like 200 bucks just because you want a game online. Like, that, that would just kill the industry, man. No. Yeah. It would kill these, multi... Oh, go ahead, Assassin. A lot of these, like, um, I know when we were comparing, like, prices with the internet, and, like, m- even for, like, 50 by me, is so expensive compared to, like, your, like, you know, 200, you know, download speed. And just adding a $20, which could be, like, the lowest, is just ridiculous people aren't gonna pay that they can't afford it yeah. at least here right what were you gonna say taylor i was gonna say it kills a multi-million or multi-billion dollar industry which would then hurt the internet companies in return and their sales would go down from that oh yeah not not to mention it promotes monopolies with companies trying to create deals with other companies so, oh, you want this service, you can't have a decent quality unless you have us. Right. Yep. And, by the way, monopolies are 
pretty much illegal right. in the U.S. Right. Yeah, and they're fought everywhere. Like in Europe, monopolies are fought. I don't know if they're necessarily like quote unquote legal like they are in the U.S. But monopolies are fought. Oh no, left companies and right. have tried them. They've been sued because yeah, yeah. it is deemed illegal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember what law it is, but it's definitely deemed illegal. Yeah, yeah, for sure. In the U.S., for one hundred percent. Um. Yeah, and Supersonic Station makes a good point. Like, not only is it just like the video game industry and just like buying games and playing them, but like. Twitch, you you know, YouTube streaming, you know, Mixer, that kind of stuff. Goodbye. <laughs> like, or look at those, um, like, Voodoo, the ones where you stream movies, places like Crackle, you know, all those other things. Con. Yep. Yep. Basically. I mean, no, it wouldn't be con. You just nine well, yeah, ninety nine a month for the Crackle package. Yeah. <laughs> you have to pay $10 to use a free app. How well, fun. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know about this guy, but uh, Barnacles on YouTube, Jerry Berg. I found this uh, post that he sent to the FCC through that website that we had up earlier. Um, and, you know, he has, you know, like almost a quarter billion views, you know. Uh, he, has, he has a lot of views on his channel, big YouTuber. And he's essentially telling the FCC through this letter that uh, I screen grabbed here um, that – you know, his livelihood is gone. Like, these people that make YouTube uh, living for a living, they do YouTube for a living, like, you know, adding an extra $40 or so a month just so you have the prime YouTube, like, you know, that's that cuts into your, that cuts into your you know, monthly income, and that, that's a big deal. Like, that's, a, that's, for some companies, it's like a cell phone payment. If you don't have yeah. the home phone, you know, I mean, cell phones are becoming, obviously, you know, a necessity these days. That kind of thing. I mean, it's crazy. It's just crazy. Um, small business that rely on it would be screwed. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, people would be screwed everywhere. The, the cable companies argue that it promotes, like, investors investing in specific companies and promotes competition and, and it makes people want to improve because you don't, you know, you can provide better access so then the other company would have to do something to provide better access back and, you know, competition's good and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, competition's only good for the people making the money, not the people paying the money. No, nope. these probably people are going to get paid if, you know, we lose the net neutrality. They're probably like, oh, you know, grab 100 bucks. Oh, I just screwed, you know, Wisconsin over. Let me just bite my ass and throw it down the toilet. Jesus. You know what I mean? Because I, I can do this because <laughs> you're paying me to uh, let you use fucking Crackle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, that's about it on net neutrality. I'm, I'm sure this will come up again when more official rulings happen because, you know, some people are saying they're going to get rid of it. Some people are saying they're going to just, like, edit it heavily. You know, nothing nothing is firm in stone 100% yet, you know, um, but it's getting there. So we should be – we should all be worried about this and all should, you know, speak your mind. You can go to those sites and, and send a letter to the FCC. It's really simple. It's like filling out a contact form. It's, it's so simple. Um so you should voice your opinion, say why it's a big deal to you. I know it's a big deal. Um, you know, people in the YouTube chat have been talking up a storm about why it's a big deal to them. I, I appreciate you guys coming in. I mean, everybody on this podcast has a kind of a different opinion on it, so um, on why it affects them personally. So it's it's a big deal. Um, and another thing, yeah, with please. sending a letter to any government official, pretty much one letter represents five thousand people's views. Mm -hmm. So if 20 people send it, they see that as, I can't do math, but suddenly. <laughs> like 10, uh, 20 people times 5,000, that's like uh, 100,000. 100,000? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if just everyone that watched this podcast, that one, that represents like. Yeah, a ton of people. Yeah, that's a lot of yeah. people. That's a big reach. I mean, yeah, exactly. You put, you know, you put your address. I think you can optionally put your address. I don't know if you have to, but mm -hmm. you, know, you put your address. They they see that as you, your friends, your family. They don't just see that as, you know, uh, you know, ZPCI assassin from small town Wisconsin. They see that as ZPCI assassin and at least like his 30 family members and all of his friends that he games with and all this. Stuff. I mean, it, 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 people say, oh, you know, I don't want to vote because one vote doesn't matter and it's too much of an effort or I don't want to send this because it's just me and who cares, but it makes a difference, guys. It really does. I, I know Jizzle saying the government doesn't give a fuck. They give a fuck. Of course they do. Of course, they don't want this. The government obviously uh, 
you know, the, the government's being pressured, I feel. The government's being pressured to, to want this. I don't see why this benefits the government at all. To be and honest. the government kind of has to care because it's written in the Constitution, the law <laughs> of the land, that if the people feel that the government is not doing what they're supposed to do, the people have the right to overthrow the government. Right, right. So? So we want to break any laws by overthrowing the government. Just a fair reminder. And people, and people may say, you know, that are in, like, Russia or whatever, or in Australia that watch the podcast, they may say, ah, oh, sucks to be you guys. Guess what? This is affecting everybody. Like, it's not just a U.S. problem. Trump is a U.S. problem. Net neutrality is an everyone problem on different, you know, on, on different, uh, different levels, of course. But, I mean, um... All right, I think that's it about net neutrality. We have to move on in the interest of time, but let us know certainly in the comments or hit us up on Twitter. What do you guys feel about this? Because it's a big, it's a big topic, and we appreciate people who are watching live uh, commenting about it. I know a lot of you people have put your opinions in, and we appreciate that. Um. All right, next up, really quick because I think the deals were terrible personally, and I think everyone's going to agree, but maybe I'm wrong. Prime Day was on the 11th, which was Tuesday, and, uh, you know, they had some consoles on sale. They had some sales on Xbox One S's, uh, bundles, I should say specifically. They had um, sales on uh, PlayStation 4 Slim bundles. They had hard drives on sale. They had some accessories, some headphones. I know Astros were like 25% off or something, or I think some Astros were up to like 40% off. Um, games, though, games weren't that good of a deal. Like, if you struck right at 9 p.m., on the 10th, you got some good deals, but otherwise, I don't think you got really good deals, but I could be wrong. What do you guys think? Did you did you look at Prime Day deals? Did you get in on any? What are you guys' opinions on it? I don't have Prime. Oh, okay. Well, then forget you. <laughs> You're out. Yep. Then. Um, <laughs> I have Prime. I got the date wrong. Oh, my God. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes. My girlfriend was the exact same way. Like We have Prime, and she was kind of looking forward to it, and uh, yesterday, she's like, where are the deals at? And I'm like, you serious? Like, did you go on Amazon at all? Because uh, she sits at a computer all day and she has free reign, the computer. Like, she can essentially do whatever she wants. And uh, I can't believe she didn't go on Amazon, like, once. Not on her phone, not on her computer. But uh, nonetheless, people did get the date wrong. Um, clowns, did you see any deals? Did you like any deals? What did you... Well, I wasn't really impressed with the video game deals this year. I mean, for people who didn't have consoles... It was a great time to get one, like at, at an affordable price with free games. But other than that, like I didn't see any super fantastic deals. Um, there was some good TV deals and some good uh, PC deals for people just getting into that. So that those were there. Um, yeah, but for me, the only thing I picked up was a Bluetooth controller that holds your phone, so I can just like you know, play with a controller and emulate to my phone and stuff. You grab that or? Yeah, I did. Nice. Yeah. Normally the one I grabbed was normally like 69 and I got it for like 13 bucks. Oh, sick. You should do like a review video on that thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I hope, hopefully it's not like a cheap one, but we'll see when I get it. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah, the video game deals weren't that great. I know Jizzle in the YouTube chat says, you know, he doesn't know if Amazon canceled the price glitch orders. I will tell you, I got in on a price glitch order. Uh, Rhyme for Xbox One was like just under $7, and I have that in my possession. So that they honored that. Um, I, so I have Rhyme on disc, and it was like $6.50. Um, I pre-ordered the Mega Man Legacy Collection 2. That's normally, what is that, normally like 40 bucks. Something like that. I'm going to have to look that up. Mega Man Legacy Collection 2. Uh, oh, that's normally 20 bucks. I think I pre-ordered that for $6.50, and they haven't canceled that wow. yet. Wow. Yeah, I haven't canceled, they haven't canceled that. So they were pre-ordering, like, everybody's golf for PS4. That's normally $40. They were pre-ordering that for, like, 11 so there were some price glitches. They were Because what they were doing, if you look at checkout, they did the Prime discount, but they did it multiple times. For some reason, it was a it was a weird glitch. So um, I'm looking at the deals really quick. So the console deals, the Xbox One S, people are saying in the YouTube chat that was a good deal. And, and Cloud, you said consoles were a good deal. Um, so it was a 500 gigabyte console and a play and charge kit, Xbox white wireless controller, three digital games, and that was 240 dollars. 
Is that Reezy snoring? Who the snoring? fuck snoring? <laughs> yeah. Like, yep. I think it is. Trying to, to wake him up. up. Oh, my yeah. Wake that motherfucker up. I just heard that. Like, out of nowhere. Yeah, it's been going snoring. on, like, half half dance. <laughs> is it really? I haven't heard <laughs> it Yeah, I just didn't want to you know, interrupt. <laughs> yeah. like, I kept trying to wake him up to make him stop. I'm sorry. Guys, this is an exclusive Reezy snoring on this podcast. If you heard it here, you heard it first. <laughs> See, just world goes, record. Jizzle goes, what the fuck is that noise? So I think it just finally <laughs> came through. Assassin must have like sonic ears or something, because I just heard it for the first time just now, too. Um, uh, I caught him a couple times. Sorry. <laughs> Continue with Prime. It's all right. Yeah, so the Xbox One S deal, you got like three games and an Xbox control, another controller and the play and charge kit. That was 240 bucks. So that was a pretty good... That was a pretty good deal. Now everyone's like, sounded like a human who was snoring. Nice. <laughs> Keith, tra- Keith Trailer goes, I thought that was Assassin at first. Yeah. <laughs> why would it be me? I'm like wide awake. I'm not here like snoring or making stupid noises. Oh my God. I guess he wasn't impressed with the Prime deals, huh? Yeah. Jeez. Reezy's like, fuck it. <laughs> Prime gets putting him to sleep. Um, put me to sleep too. These game deals were shit. Absolute shit. Um, yeah, Assassin, you didn't look at any of the deals at all? Oh, uh, I didn't have Prime, so. I mean, there was a trial, but I'm broke. <laughs> Since I just bought Destiny and Battlefront 2, so. Yeah. Um, they were externals. It was a two terabyte external for like 60 bucks. There was a. Eight terabyte external, I think El Boogie said in the chat was like 160 bucks or something like that. Let me see, yeah, 160 bucks for an eight terabyte external. That's pretty fucking good. Um, Keith Trailer says that because you've done 142 podcasts in a row, you know, you're probably snoring. It's a real grind. So. Uh, yeah. A lot of hours. <laughs> oh man. All right. Oh, well. Man. Moral of the story is that Prime Day was a dud. I think we'll move on from that. But Prime Day, if you were a gamer, that was pretty much a dud. I know there were some good headset deals um, here and there, and, and like Klaus said, some TV deals. But if, you're looking for, if you were looking for game deals, you know, like Black Friday kind of stuff, I know they say better than Black Friday, more deals than Black Friday. Um, yeah, game deals were not too great. So we shall move on. I know a lot of people in the chat also said that Prime Day deals are bad, so everyone's in agreement, and we shall move on. Um, real quick, before we get to Weird News of the Week, I want to bring this up, because I know Assassin was the one who brought this to my attention, and uh, this is actually a really, really big deal. Um, EA Access is bringing some really, really nice content over the next couple of months, specifically Battlefield 1 and Titanfall 2 are both going to be in the vault by the end of September. So those are two pretty good games. Like Titanfall 2, I'm not a huge fan of the multiplayer anymore. Um, but the single player, I think, was one of the best single player campaigns for a shoot I've ever played. Uh, <laughs> Prime Day, RIP, rest and shit. I see that. I see that. Um, Assassin's that's the tagline for this podcast. Cheese in the can. I should just change the title, Taylor, to like <laughs> episode 142. RIP, rest and shit. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, think about Prime Day, rest and shit. Uh, what else was there? Uh, Logitech, uh, Astro, rest and shit. No net, net neutrality, neutrality, rest yeah. and shit. Yeah. <laughs> it works. It's the theme. Oh, uh, just to round out the information about EA Access real quick before I let Assassin speak on this. Uh, all the DLC now for Battlefront 1 has been added. Uh, it's already been added, so that's not going to be the end of September. That's already available for everyone. And there's going to be, you know, always they have the early access trials for all their uh, sports games. So you get those, but that's not really the meat and potatoes. Meat and potatoes is the the Battlefront DLC being free for everyone and Battlefield 1 and Titanfall 2 coming to the vault. So, Assassin, you wanted to talk about this, bud, so take the floor, my man. Good stuff. I mean, more Battlefield 1 players that don't play the objective or do the role. <laughs> I'm all for that, as long as if I can play the game. And then yell at my teammates. As for the Battle, Battlefront DLC, I mean, it's, I think it's better than the main game. Unless definitely. what you heard me say last night, then it's definitely not the best. <laughs> but it, it's very good. And the achievements are extremely easy. So um, if you're one of those type of people in Titanfall 2, is. Uh, the yeah, single player welcome. in Titan. No, the single player in Titanfall 2 is excellent. Come on. The, the single player was good. 
Um, the multiplayer, I think, and the beta and the first like few weeks of it launch was good, and then now it's just yeah. and now it's just everyone just like jumping like they're fucking Tinkerbell, like you know, flying and it's just a bunch of crap. It, it's just not fun. Yeah, it's out of control. I agree. It's it's a little out of control now. Uh, I mean, I'd love to give it another try. I mean, I gave it a second try. Th- I thought it was out of control. I, you know, I, I want to play it. It's just, it really is not, not a lot of fun. I mean, the people that are, that have the upgraded parts are just way too strong. I think too. Well, plus, you know, all those people, I, I feel like if you have a scuff or an elite controller, you're, you're just going to be so much better because you have, you know, so many control mechanics at your fingertips compared to someone who doesn't. Yeah. It's so much easier for them. Yeah, that's true. Um, Taylor or Clowns, big news, you think, right? Yeah, access? No? Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's, you know, it's it's to be expected. I mean, eventually everything's going to come to the vault these days. Um, and it hurts the trading prices of the games. It's still good. Yes, it's great that these great games are coming and everybody can play them. Um I hope all these people send assassin friend requests. DPCI space assassin is one of the best Battlefield One players on Xbox One. If you yeah. get EA access and Battlefield One, send him a friend's request. Randomly join his lobbies, be in his squad, and he will help you to victory. As long as you play the objective, are you getting in that little? No, he he'll carry you the whole way. Don't worry about it. No, no, no. There no. you go. No. You need a BTFO or a GTFO. It was BTFO. Get the fuck off. P- P- PTFO. Play the fucking objective oh. or get the fuck out. I thought you. I, I thought you. I thought you said BTFO. Like beat no, the fuck out. die. <laughs> no. Yeah, just all that is my notifications. I don't know why they were coming through the computer, and they still are. Why is this? Why is this? Okay, I'm just going to X that out so that doesn't come out anymore. I don't know. Um, all right, yeah, that was my Facebook. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> it was. It was coming through the stream. I don't know why it was. I don't know why I was capturing that, but I could see it on the like uh, the volume indicator thing on the stream that it was coming through, and I'm like, why Why is that happening? But um, beat the fuck off, assassin, right? No. <laughs> Play the fuck objective. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you just might as well make this podcast mature audience because, I mean, R.I.P. <laughs> and all this stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just a reminder. Uh, tomorrow for our charity stream. Let me throw that back up uh, there again. Uh, the game is PG-13. Is, yeah, PG-13 um, <sighs> for, the, for the stream. I mean, the chat, I mean, you probably can say Assassin, whatever you're you gonna want. Assassin, you're going to do but, great. But Assassin, <laughs> you can be tough. Uh, <laughs> Assassin, I will say you probably should not say beat the fuck off during that stream. Right? <laughs> well, or do what I did when I was streaming for, what was it, St. Jude's cancer research uh, right. thing. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I ate some Little Caesars pizza and I felt so fucking sick that I said I'd rather like, kill myself or something. It was so <laughs> bad. Yeah, that was, pretty, that was pretty bad. That was so inappropriate for the time and for what you were doing. Yeah. Um, assassin. <laughs> well, okay. We I need to get like so... a mute button and just mute assassin when it gets. To... Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> it starts going I'm... south. Well, you you have you probably have those days where you're just like so sick and like you just see food you just want to throw up and yeah. you're like yeah. face is all pale. It's like you're a ghost and you just want to yeah, like I can die. Still control my language. Uh, it's going to be a struggle for me tomorrow. It, uh, <laughs> it's for a great cause, and I would do it very often if they wouldn't do that stream. Can, there, but it's going to be tough. Can we put a warning under Assassin's name? May have Tourette's or something. Wow. God. No, I, I'll, I'll be I'll be good, but I mean, there might be a, a sl- you know slip of the tongue or you know say something <laughs> really bad. Yeah, Assassin. The way it's set up, I'm not going to be able to like mute you or anything like that. Or, you know what I mean? We're going to be doing it through potty chat, so. It's we could get a swear jar for Assassin. Every time he curses, he owes us like five bucks each or <gasps> no, something. Every time, every time he swears, no, he he owes the charity for like five bucks. Yeah, that's for good charity, idea. Well, so. then I guess I'll just leave my mic muted <laughs> <laughs> like I do most of the time. We should do one for the podcast, too. After he gets a certain amount, then we do a giveaway. There you go. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. That's a great idea. <laughs> I like that idea. 
He'll be like, he'll be like, beat the fuck up. Oh, whoops. Oh, they will add us to the jar. Um. Dude, right. my swear jar would be clean because I don't swear on the podcast. I know you're so profesh. You really are. <laughs> um. So yeah, Sometimes Taylor. You, huh? What were you thinking? Sometimes you just don't know you're you're swearing. Like I was talking to my family the other day, and I just swore like twice. I'm like, I didn't even realize it. Like. Oh yeah, dude. I do that with my family all the time. I was talking to my mom the other day, and I was like, "Fuck that!" And she's just like looking at me, and I'm just like, "What?" <laughs> Nope, I can control myself. Oh, like we were playing, uh, we were playing this card game Coup. I don't know if people in the chat know what this is. I know, I know the Jizzle does, but this is card game Coup. And uh, my nephews were there. My girlfriend was there, and, and my brother made her lo- made my girlfriend lose. And my girlfriend was just like, "Fuck!" <laughs> and I was just like, Hold on. "Dude, <laughs> we got an important message in the chat from Keith Treller. He wants a Dishonor two signed copy from Assassin and Clowns." Can we do that, Assassin? We can make that happen. For charity. We can make that right, happen did for I charity. Just, for the kids. I just heard, I just heard Reezy snore. Is he when snoring? I said no, that. it's okay. Nothing happened. I heard it. Nope. I heard it. No. Nope. All right, real quick, before we get off this topic, Taylor, is this news attracting you to EA Access? Are you going to be a new subscriber or what? Possibly. Because isn't it only like five bucks a month anyway? Mm-hmm. Yep, or thirty a year. Yeah, thirty dollars a year, yeah. I, I just subscribed yeah. nearly thirty bucks. I mean that's crazy. You get so many games now. I know. I'd probably do it because I've been wanting Battlefield for a while. I've just been too lazy to go and actually buy it. Yes. You know, See, you you all you guys missed the real value in EA access. It's two which simple is? games. Two simple games. Plants vs. Zombies. zombies. Yeah. Garden oh, Warfare true. one. And Plants vs. Zombies, Zombies Battle Warfare 2. Yeah. Yeah. Well, about just I forget that zombies. they're EA for some reason. I know. I've done that in the past, too. Like, when I went to EA Play last year, not in 2017, but in 2016, and I saw, like, the... Uh, what's the one? The the new one, Assassin, that spins around. The zombie's name, I can't remember. Super yeah, Brains? Super Brains. Yeah, yeah. W- w- when I saw Super Brains, I was like, what the fuck is he doing here? Oh, wait, that's EA. Like, I, I totally, that slipped my mind. Yeah, it's, it's like a weird thing in their portfolio, but they need to make a third one. They uh, probably will. 2019. Yeah, You're just saying yeah. everything comes out 2019 now. Yeah, no, e- EA mentioned <laughs> that, they, that they're something working on it somewhere in the article I read, so. Nice. There you go, there you go. I'm Can't psychic. Wait. All right, so Assassin is getting that day one edition with the statue digitally. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then he's gonna sign a copy for Garrett, right? Oh my god, I thought it was a poster. Now it's a game. Yeah, well, you know, inflation. No, inflation. Garrett, Garrett asked him, and this is a true story, guys. Garrett asked him in the Twitch chat one time to sign his chest and lift up his shirt. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Oh my god. Yeah, good, good times, good times. But yeah. Yeah, access more more value than ever, people. So definitely looking again at thirty bucks this September. It's gonna have so many good things in it. Like you know, just the ten hours of trials for like all the new games. I think that's worth thirty dollars in and of itself. Like they had it for Andromeda. They have it for every game essentially. Ten dollar early, tri- ten hour early trial, worth it. It's really mm-hmm. good with the Madden games too, because I mean you could essentially get through the Madden games. Oh yeah, you could. You could score like you know three hundred gamer score at least in those games in ten hours. No, no doubt about it. Um, or if you're just gonna pre-order a game like when I bought Battlefield One Ultimate Edition and you just spend five bucks, you're saving a lot more than that's right. Just five bucks. That's right. Moral of the story: EA Access huge value. Um, how are you gonna get that signed Dishonored Two copy key trailer? We'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Um, I'll do. Follow me on Twitter. I don't know if you follow me on Twitter, but follow me on Twitter. We'll DM. We'll see if we can make that happen. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Let's end the show with weird news of the week. We're bringing that back this week, of course. Um, and this one, oh, man. You know, after mulling this one through, um, it's been making the rounds on Twitter about a uh, 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 UK newspaper where this woman kind of like puts an ad up. There's a story about her son that is like 14 years old and has a huge addiction to Xbox and he games for just like 11 hours straight and every day and like his mom can't get through to him and 
he like started acting all weird like he was emotionally attached to the games and uh like he was in the games or like part of them and and he couldn't separate himself and he was literally addicted like he couldn't you know like some people will say and you know it's a fair assessment that zpci assassin will game for 11 hours a day like it's not a problem (laughs) but Uh, no let's go a little more than that ZBC says yeah. we'll game for like 14 hours a day. Let's go a little bit more than that. More than that. <laughs> yeah, more than that. ZBC says we'll game for about 25 hours a day. For 20 no, hours that's a little less than that. I get sleepy. Nah. And boys. He gets, you know, Assassin sometimes gets up, what was it, like, uh, it depends. Like, sometimes five his time, sometimes six his time, sometimes seven. And he'll get on Xbox and game all the way till about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. All right, so that's like 12 plus, so that's like 15, 16 hours a day. So some would say, you know, ZPCI Assassin games for 16 hours a day, <laughs> and, and it's not a problem. Like, no one, you know, no one thinks that's out of the ordinary. Um, but ZPCI Assassin is also, you know, of drinking age, and ZPCI Assassin can also take a day off where he goes to the movies, cuts his lawn, does his grandma's nonsense chores, those kinds of things. That's part of his normal everyday life. But this kid, apparently, like, if he got any less than 11 hours a day, this kid, like, went apeshit. And the mother was, like, begging for help. Like, the mother just couldn't handle it. Like, he, the kid was, like, skipping school, I think. You know, the kid was just out of control. So, uh, what do you guys think of the story? I, I kind of, I, I do want to go to Assassin first on this because, you know, we're making fun of him, you know, but. It hits yeah. home for him, you know. It, it, it yeah, hits right. home. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it may remind him of just like seven years ago when this was his his young ass gaming for eleven hours a day. So, uh, what do you what do you think about this, Assassin? See, I'm like this kid. I knew I had to do stuff, you know, do my homework and go go to school. <laughs> um, usually, my homework was play games and do it at the same time. But anyway, um, I I went. If I had to do stuff, I wouldn't complain like this kid. I mean, this kid, if he just game, this guy's going places. But since he's complaining and stuff, this guy needs a little help. Just a little. Yeah, I would say. I mean, 14 years old, like heavily addicted. Um, the mother, The mother says, in quote, I quote, his behavior spiraled out of control. And in the article, you'd have to see the article. Um, Maybe I'll link it in the description. Um, somebody transcribed it from the paper, and you can read it online. It talks about, uh, you know, this kid is just just out of control. He's just a social mess. Uh, his life is, like, totally derailed because of video games. Um, and the mother's, like, begging for help. Like, the mother doesn't even understand it. The mother doesn't understand video games, really. She's, like, begging for help about this kid that she can't control. She, the kid is just always gaming. So, um, Taylor or, or clowns on this? What do you think? I mean, um, there was a point in time where I gamed 16, 17 hours a day. I would wake up and I would game and sometimes I wouldn't go to sleep. Mm-hmm. So oh. I understand this kid. <laughs> Okay, we have t- we have two of the four podcast members on the side of the kid at this point. Um, <laughs> Not alone. Yeah, why don't you, Assassin, why don't you uh, send this kid an email or something and be like, you're not alone, bro. Well, the kid I mean, he needs email. to calm the fuck down. Like, you know, to, having like a fit that he can't play for so many hours. Like, maybe you need to take a break and smell the roses or something. Like, maybe he's allergic to roses. Well, then go uh. smell some <laughs> fake ones, you know, made out of paper or plastic. Well, you know, when I was that kid's age, um, my dad spoiled the crap out of me because my dad had all these restaurants, so he always bought me like the latest Nintendo game, Super Nintendo game, Sega Genesis, Sega game, whatever it was. And I'd be like, I'd get home from school and I'd be on that thing. So maybe like one or two in the morning, like working on Zelda or working on Mega Man. So what my mom would do, she would come in the room and it would be like upstairs and she would open up the windows, open up the blinds. So all this cold air would come in at night 
and then she'd turn off the light on me. And I'd actually have to get off the game to turn the light back on and shut the windows. I'm like, oh, what time is it? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that kind of worked. You know? Okay, so Cl- so Clowns is now giving some advice to the to the mom about how to get this kid <laughs> off his off his addiction from from prior experience. So we've got. Yeah, but, uh, so sorry, is that some good? But turning out the light isn't gonna help. I mean, screens these days are you know pretty pretty you know light up or whatever, yeah, bright or whatever. Yeah, that screen. Then, like you know when you sit in a dark room and you're looking at the at the screen, like yeah, yeah, I start the screen. You get that squint going. You've got that. That that headache going, you know what I mean? I don't know. I prefer gaming in the dark. Oh, here we go. My life. Wow. Oh, I Are we sure well, we sure you're not. This isn't you in this article. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Oh, okay. Well, but, you know, also another trick my mom would do is, uh, she would hide the cords, like to plug in the systems, or put the wrong ones there. So, like, I'd have like a Sega cord for Super Nintendo or Nintendo at the time, and I'd be like, "What happened to the cord?" My mom'd be like, "Oh, I don't know. It's missing." That's why and I got a few and I don't. That's what I did. She well, is an evil genius. If she was the purchaser and I was a kid, how would I get more? That's well, why you say you broke some and he didn't. And well, she'd be them. like, too bad. See you later. <laughs> well, apparently in this article, it gets to that. I think I think that she took away the cords and I think the kid like beat the shit out of his younger siblings because he thought the younger kids like took the cords or like prevented him from gaming so he was like swearing at his at his siblings and he beat the shit out of them and stuff he's like this kid is was was literally addicted to his xbox like this kid has a problem it sounds like he might have autism yeah right i mean i mean i'm being serious yeah yeah because he's so engrossed in the world and he doesn't want to be distracted it could be a sign of like some type of uh minor or severe autism like apparently the kid, the mother is like sought counseling for the kid, and the kid just like either won't go to counseling or the counseling is like totally ineffective, and the kid like just games secretly. I mean, I'm no parent or anything. I mean, I'm of parent age, and I know clowns clowns is a parent, but it. I I feel like if I wanted to take, if I wanted my kid to not have a console, like I'm just fucking taking it away. Like I'm not yeah. letting my kid walk all over me. Yeah, put your foot down. You know I mean, you know, in front of, in all fairness, my mom tried stuff like that, and then I would just wait up at night when she's sleeping and call that one nine hundred Nintendo tip line and have a conversation <laughs> with those people. Big like, money in that. yeah, I would. I would just have a. Con- I'd be like, oh, so, um, what's the record for beating Zelda? Oh, really? I'd sit there like twenty, forty five minutes later. My mom would hear me talk, and she'd come in the room like, "Are you on the phone?" Oh yeah, called nine hundred Nintendo tips, whatever it was back then, you know. That's funny. Well, well, I don't know, assassin. Like it all comes back to you, big guy. Because I know wow, you. Because out of everyone here, like you're if, the worst offender. If, if yeah, if, if it comes down to, you know, someone gaming for long stretches of time, and and that they do. I, I feel I feel like that's you, so I, I gotta yeah. I, gotta, I gotta understand. I gotta know what you think would be the way. Like if if you were your mom stopping you, what <laughs> oh, would wow. you do? <laughs> well, if I was a mean person, I would be like one of those videos you see on uh, YouTube where they grab a hammer and smash the Xbox. Nice. And then record it and put it all over the internet. Send a tip um, to Assassin's mom right now. Send a tip. Okay, go next. Um, okay, then the other time I would literally take the like cords from the Xbox. So it's just the Xbox or the Xbox or someone put in the chat screen time limits. Oh, yeah, so Boogie. Yep, it. that was, a good, that was yeah. a good suggestion. Yep, yep. Very good one. Or third, um, put them in a mental asylum. Oh, put him in a up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or just go to the breaker and shut off the power to his room. There you go. Yeah, I mean, that's possible. Yeah, but the kid could be smart and learn how to turn it back on when no one's watching. Yeah, but it's still going to get them off the thing yes. for at least five minutes while they go try and figure it out. Does it specify if he's in the single player or multiplayer? It does not, no. It does not. But it does It does say he gets very violent when he doesn't have his Xbox. So. Well, then he's definitely playing like Call of Duty. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, <laughs> definitely wow. Call of Duty. I mean, player. why not GTA? Now it's Call of Duty. Sorry, Call of Duty's more violent than well, GTA. Well, do, do you hear the people on like Call of Duty? You go in there and like, I fucked your mother last night. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Wow. This is going to be really, jar. Yeah, this is gonna be really bad for jar. Sassy tomorrow during the, during the uh, charity stream. Get it all out now, Sassy. Get it all out now. You know, it, it's just all that toxic crap and the, the Call of Duty scene. It's just, it's bad. Why do you think I stick with game or party chat and mute everyone? Hey. Maybe... Maybe this is uh maybe this is a way to get this kid off his addiction. Maybe you like get a Call of Duty crazy player to come over and like beat the shit out of him and then scare the sh oh, you wow. know scare the shit out of him so he doesn't go back on Xbox. You know. Nope. Uh, Keith Trailer says, "What about Peggle? Yeah, Peggle has caused me some frustration back in the day." I don't even want to talk about Peggle. <laughs> yeah, I mean Peggle has Peggle has caused some frustration. I don't know if I would. Why not, uh, Minesweeper. Minesweeper, that caused me some frustration back in the day as well. Dark Souls? Nope, hasn't caused me frustration back in the day. Can you imagine playing like Dark Souls for 11 hours straight? That sounds like, yeah, Easy. I did that, like earlier this year. Yeah, Easy. Did, yeah. <laughs> Easy stuff. <laughs> you could be playing oh, yeah. Charles of Osiris on Destiny. I know that's very cancerous. Uh, Assassin, what Jesus level are you perceived level in Call of Duty? Um... Black Ops 3 and Infinite Warfare and... Infinite Warfare, I haven't even hit one. Um, Modern Warfare, I hit one. Maybe uh -huh. two. Uh, 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 let's Black get to... Okay, so yeah. Black Ops 3 for a game that's, what, almost in its third year, I'm almost nine. Wow. Um, I think Modern Warfare 3, I was max, which is 20. Um, Black Ops 2 was max, which is 10. Um... I think Black Ops 1 on the PS3, I was 13. I'm thinking I'm like 10 or 9 on the Xbox. So you're one of these crazy savages that would come and kill these kids. What level are you in Battlefield 1? What rank uh, are you? 100 and almost 5. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But you also have to remember double XP and squad boosts. And that counts for your... And those 16-hour days, those would be like your 18- to 19-hour days. Right, <laughs> right. It's true. <laughs> all right, well, I think that's that's all for this episode. I think this weird news is just, it's frightening to me. Like, I I, I mean, I, you think of 11 hours, you, you don't think really that's that long. Like, all of us can remember playing for 11 hours of gaming in a day, but... Like, I'm not going to go ape shit when my controller is taken away from me. Like, I'm probably just going to go to bed because I'm tired as hell from looking at a screen for that long. Nope. But, I mean, this kid apparently, like, got really nasty. And, and like, I know people that, you know, get angry at video games and do weird things. But um, not, like, 14-year-old kids and not kids that would, like, beat the shit out of their parents or their siblings because of it. So, thought that was perfect for Weird News of the Week. Um, it was talked a lot on Twitter. And... I gotta thank, I think El Boogie was the one who sent that to me and was like, talk about that this week, so glad we were able to do that. Um, so yeah, before we get out of here, I just want to remind people again, you know, tomorrow is the stream that we're going to be doing Rocket League, we're going to be playing for an hour, so please come by and check it out. Um, if you want to donate to uh, the cause, the, the uh, Alzheimer's Foundation is technically where you're donating to. Um, you can go in the description below. You can see where to donate. That will, we'll, you know, shut that out a lot during the stream tomorrow as well. But we'll be streaming at 9 p.m. Eastern time on our Mixer channel and also on, uh, you know, it's co-streamed on the Gamers United Against Dementia Mixer channel, which is also linked below in the uh, in the description. So on the YouTube. So, um, so definitely. Uh, Definitely check that out. It's for an awesome cause. They'll be streaming for 13 hours, so there'll be somebody different every hour streaming. So there's a lot to uh, a lot to see there. I think there's going to be Rainbow Six Siege. There's going to be uh, some Battlefield 1, Rocket League. There's going to be uh, maybe some Jackbox or, like, Use Your Words, the Jackbox ripoff. Um, so there's going to be a lot of stuff. There's going to be a podcast during that time, too. I'm pretty sure... Um, there's going to be some Killer Instinct fighting on there. Um, I think AC Bongos is going to be on it from Xbox. Um, so, 
yeah, go check that out. Also, you know, don't forget to check out our social media channels, Facebook and, and uh, Twitter. Twitter is 4GWQ Podcast. Facebook is 4 Guys of Quarters. Go follow us, like us on there. We appreciate it. Obviously, if you're watching on Mixer, Twitch, YouTube, you know uh, you know what we're at on there. But 4 Guys of Quarters on those ones. Go follow us. Um, did I see Beam? Because I didn't mean to. I meant Mixer. But I might have said Mixer. Um yeah, the website, fourguyswithquarters.com. Go go search us on there. Um, reviews, articles, past episodes, that kind of thing. Please uh, please go check those out. And also, you know, follow us individually as well. I think I may change these Twitch things to for us to, like, beam. I know Taylor streams on Twitch still, but... Oh, I guess, Assassin, you streamed on Twitch earlier today. It was, yeah, on the Not four guys. Not the personal now. one, but the four guys yeah. one. I don't know. We're going to be changing the layout a little bit, so... Actually, a lot of it, so... Uh, <laughs> maybe we'll change that. Um, so it doesn't have really Twitch anymore for our individual ones. Cause I don't think I've streamed to my individual Twitch channel in like two years. So, um, but follow us on Twitter definitely and hit us up on Xbox cause we're definitely down to play with you guys. Uh, you know, all, all of our podcast brethren, if you will. Um, so yeah, other than that, we'll see you guys later. Oh, pre-download destiny, right? Assassin. How big is that? Uh, it's Destiny's almost 13 gigs, but if you have Spectrum, like myself, it'll take you literally forever because it'll download it 400 kilobytes per second. Well, there you go. Start downloading now, um, <laughs> right after this podcast. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye. Bye.